Hello, I have a new gimbal here that I want to talk about. This is the Zhiyun Crane 2. Uh, I got it uh, from my friend Alex Timelapse. He also has a YouTube channel you can check out. It's going to be in the description. I've used the original Crane a lot in my productions, the Crane V1 and the Crane V2. And now that the Crane 2 is out, I want to see if there's any reason for me to upgrade to it. Because I don't necessarily need the higher capacity for weight. That's the number one selling point of this. It has a very high weight capacity about seven pounds, I think. Generally, I don't need that because my cameras are pretty light and my lenses are pretty light, and I don't want to carry that much more weight when I'm shooting because it gets uncomfortable and it makes me tired. So other than that, why would I upgrade? Well, it also claims to have a follow focus that you can use to focus your shots, but this only works on Canon cameras, and I use Sony's, so I'm not gonna upgrade for that reason either. It has an LCD display when you turn it on that I guess if it's connected to the camera will give you some info like the f-stop and the shutter speed, but I don't need that function. I mean, I can just look on the back of my camera and see that. Being that none of those things are particularly selling points for me, for this gimbal, all I can think of is maybe it's steadier and maybe it'll allow me to use lenses that I couldn't use before. I have balanced up the 24 to 240 millimeter lens. This is my biggest, heaviest lens that I ever use. It did manage to balance quite well on this gimbal with a few caveats. Number one, the plate rubs up against the focus ring. So if I want to do manual focus, now it's grinding against the camera plate. That was the only way for me to put the plate on the camera so that it balanced well. Number two, there's an awkward system where you have to use a coin or something to screw in the camera on the bottom. And if the screw is in the wrong place, you won't be able to access it because there'll be this barrier here. So actually it took me three or four tries to get this balanced because of all the messing around I had to do with the plate. So now it's all balanced up though. So I'm gonna walk around a little bit, see how steady it is. I'm gonna start with all stabilization within the camera off. So I'm turning off the lens stabilization and the in-body stabilization. Then I'm gonna turn the stabilization back on and see if that makes an improvement. So let's see how it does. All right, as you notice, I am getting progressively sweatier as I do this review. And that's because A, it's unseasonably hot here in Hong Kong, and B, this thing is freaking heavy. This thing is definitely heavier than the original crane. Maybe not by a whole lot, but with that coupled with the heavier lens, I'm feeling it as I walk around and as I run to do this test. Here's an issue that I've found with inverted mode. If I try to turn it on while the camera's inverted, it does this and then it stops right there. It just stops in this bizarre position. So you cannot power on the gimbal, as far as I can tell, in inverted mode without that happening. What you can do instead is start with the gimbal upright and then flip it to inverted mode and it works fine from there.
moving on, I've now put the Sony A6500 camera on the Crane 2 gimbal with a 35 millimeter f1.8 lens. This is about the lightest setup that I would use on the Crane 2. So it appears to be stable, handles inverted mode pretty well. There are no unwanted vibrations as long as I change the motor power settings to low, which is an easy thing you can do on the back of the gimbal. Just be aware that you have to turn the gimbal off and back on again after you change those settings. So I have not reviewed the footage yet, which means that I can't give my verdict on whether or not I think this is better than my current gimbal, the Moza Air, or the previous generations of the Zhiyun Crane. What I can say is that it's noticeably heavier, it's noticeably harder to hold, but it does feel a little bit smoother in operation, and it seems to handle almost any size of camera or lens that I would ever want to throw at it. If this gives a steadier image than other gimbals in its class, and if the motors drift less when it's in lock mode, it's still worth a purchase, I think, because you'll just get better footage with it. And all the other minor quibbles I have won't really matter in comparison with just getting a better shot. So I hope this was helpful for you in deciding whether or not you want to get the Crane 2. If you liked the video, please click like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time. Thanks.